If you go back to the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, it talks about uh, expressing the very core of your being. To, to show the, the very core of who you are. That is intimacy. And when in marriage, when you're talking about being intimate with your spouse, it's more than a physical act. There is an opening and a sharing of who you really are with that person. Listen, God didn't make a mistake in the book of Genesis when he said, and Adam knew his wife Eve. God doesn't shy away from sexual connotations. I mean, have you read Ezekiel? Have you read Song of Solomon? I mean, he doesn't shy away. What was he saying? He was saying there was an intimate knowledge of not just physical intimacy. There was, I, that, that Adam knew her. There was a personal intimate knowledge there. Listen, that's why I think we, sh we shy away from this intimacy with God. Because we only have the world's philosophy in this thing. Yeah. We only think of one thing when it comes to intimacy. But intimacy means bearing your soul to God. Amen. And showing God who you truly and really are. And wanting to know Him for who He truly and really is. That's being intimate. That's saying, I want that divine intimacy with God. Don't make it weird. That's what it's talking about. I want that with God. Paul's passion for his existence was, I want to know Jesus Christ. Now think with me. When did Paul meet Jesus? Now physically, he didn't. That we know of. Some people speculate that maybe he was at the crucifixion. Because he would have been there for uh, uh, the, the feast days, uh, the Passover prophet. He probably would have been there as a Pharisee. But, but he, we don't even know if Paul was at the crucifixion. He never mentions it. Did he ever meet Jesus? No. He, but he did meet him on the road to Damascus. And in Acts chapter 9, when the light shines down from heaven and Jesus talks to him, that's when Paul saw Jesus. That's when Paul met Jesus Christ, was on that road. But he missed out. On the person of Christ. And I wonder to myself, when he was with Luke, when Paul was with Luke, because they traveled with him, or when Paul was with Peter, or when Paul was with John, I wonder what they talked about. Do you think they talked about the Olympic Games? Do you think they complained about Nero? I would think that Paul was asking every question he could about Jesus. What did he do in this situation? Well, what, how, how did he heal? What did he do here? I mean, he spent a couple years in training just preparing. I wonder how many questions. They probably, you, you know, if these men weren't as spiritual as they, as they were, they probably got tired of the questions. But you see, here's the thing. When you freshly get saved, do you remember how you felt about it? You wanted to know about Christ. You're like, man, I want to know everything about Jesus. I want to know everything about the Bible. You have a discipleship course? Slow me up. The Bible says to get baptized? Baptize me right now. You know, I, I am ready. I, I want to know more about Christ. I mean, when you really get it, when you really get saved, that's what you want. But you know what's sad? Is that that fades sometimes. And I wonder today, we're looking at a man. Do you know when the Damascus Road ordeal was for Paul compared to the scripture? 30 years ago. 30 years before Paul wrote this, he got saved. Do you still have that same passion to know Jesus? That you did when you got saved. Mm. For me, it was 31 years ago. This last month that I got saved. And I would hope that my passion for knowing Jesus is more now than it was then. And here's the thing. We're talking to a man who knew God. Do you think that Paul knew Jesus more than you and I? I would say yes. I mean, look what the guy writes. We, we're, we're still studying what he's talking about. You know, trying to figure it out. I think he knew Christ, but what he's saying is, I want to know Christ more. It's not enough yet. If Paul were singing a song in church today, if he stood up to sing a solo, I think it'd be more about Jesus, what I know. More of his love and grace to show. More of his saving, full to see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus. I want to know more. 30 years later, we took our family to the ocean recently. I love the ocean. Um, I think probably we, we don't appreciate it as much because, we, you know, if you're living in California, when I, you know, I, I, I was born in Arkansas and lived in Illinois. There's no oceans nearby. Okay, there's ponds and they're disgusting and mosquitoes by the billions live there, you know. It's, it's like swamp in Arkansas almost and uh, in some places. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I love going to the ocean. I'll tell you right now, I'm afraid of the ocean like you wouldn't believe. But, uh, you know, there's sharks out there, folks. What are you talking about? I see people going to swim, and I'm like, okay, die. If that's what you want, go ahead. I watch them out there, you know. And, and then I see, like, these, you know, 14-year-olds out there, and I'm like, I'm kind of ashamed of myself. But anyway, I, I, I love going to the ocean. And uh, I, I always, anytime I go to the ocean, i got to put my hands and my feet in the water.
doesn't matter what I'm, I'm there for. I went to, I did a vow renewal ceremony on the beach in Malibu uh, a year or two ago. And uh, you know, I was in my, I was in a suit on the beach, but yet still I had to go get my hands in the water. I just, it's just a thing, I, I have to do that. Every time I go, you know, we'll take the kids and I'm, I'm holding Kelly's hand and I'll go get my feet wet and then I'll get up to my knees and I'll go out to my waist and all that. And that's about as far as I'll go. I just don't, I just don't need to go out there. I don't, I don't need to know about the stingrays and about the sharks and you know, I'm sure, you know, some jellyfish is gonna come wrap around my face as soon as I get out there, you know, and, and that's just, and then, uh, but all of you, you know, God bless you, you do that. But I love to get in just the shallows, and I love to find crabs or, or sand dollars or, or, you know, just cool shells with the kids. I will do all of that, and I love it. There's so much to discover in two inches of water. <laughs> there really is. There's so much out there in just a couple inches of water. Like, why do you need to go further? It's everything you need right there. But think if you would, like, if you're going into just the two or, or three feet of that ocean, you're looking down and you see shells, think about the unfathomable searches of the rest.